welcome to the very first episode of the Nighttime Blend with co-host Iggy and Tom. And my name is Vincent, and we have three important talk- topics to talk about tonight. You ready, Iggy? Yes. All right, so the first topic is the government shutdown, and I want to get your opinions about it. To start off, it isn't exactly just the government that has been shut down. As we can all tell, all public facilities have been shut down. Most restaurants can no longer afford to stay open because of other events. That is that is that is correct. Um, also, um, it's getting like worse as we go along, and there's 275,000 cases in the United States. 7,000 people plus have died. Globally, there's a million with 58,000 58, deaths. All right, so Vince, I'm going to now put you on the spot. Comparing okay. what the U.S. has done to, uh, say, the draconian measures taken by China and in their house if you have a cough, do you think we're doing enough? I, I think we're taking the right measures. I think the stay-at-home quarantine is working. Well, actually, no, it's not working. But I think people have to take that more seriously. Um, About that has- severity... It's it's not it's not the government's fault. They're they're issuing the right things, but the people I don't think it's the people. The people are not listening. About they, the said, si- they said stay home, and it's growing every day. So people obviously aren't staying home. Well, a part of that is the fact that m- not everyone has been tested. I'd say just in the state of Michigan, only there have been about thirty thousand tests. I believe just in the city of Detroit, we have at least a hundred thousand uh, citizens. So if we can't scale up the amount of tests we can give per day. Uh, we will never know the exact, like, scale of how many viruses we have. Yeah, I know, like, um, I think it was, like, the government, the governor of Ohio was saying, um, they, they could have, like, 100,000 in Ohio, which made, like, no sense. But you really, like, never know who has it or who doesn't have it. So that's why we have to stay inside. When you say 100,000, do you mean too more, too many, or too little? Because in my personal opinion, and the proportions of the 30,000 tests having about 12,000 cases, that means almost one in three tested have the virus. I doubt that's what the actual scale is, because it only has to be a cough. But well, overall, just... there is definitely at least 100,000 in every state that has... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Oh yeah, there's definitely at least hundred thousand in every state, but they're not like test. They're not tested. Yes. Now, Tom, how are you feeling about this? Are you like panicking at all, or? Okay, so uh, from my experience, um, obviously, it really doesn't affect me all that much because. I don't have to manage my own household. I don't really have to worry about any of the adult matters. Um, the one thing that it kind of does affect me with is obviously the quarantine. Um, it isn't as significant as it affects other people, but just the fact that we also stay home, we can't get groceries. You know, mm-hmm. I can't even get a haircut. Like I haven't gotten a haircut in probably three months because of Corona. And yeah. um, I don't know, it just seems to be growing, 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 and as you guys said, people aren't listening to the stay-at-home rules, they're not listening to social distancing. I saw a news report, um, there are a ton of kids at the beach, just chilling there, and they're basically saying, like, if I get corona, I'll get corona. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. People have to listen to the um, scientists and stuff, that's the only way we're going to solve the disease, or at least get it to be within a manageable portion. Yeah, yeah. But then, also, the scientists aren't just saying stay at home. They're saying if you have space, in other words, I'm looking at people in Wyoming who have several miles for the next family. They want you to be, have the fresh air so you're not, like, getting maddened. And also, the fresh air that you can get from, like, an open window actually does, in fact, help keep you, like, as if you're outside. So yeah. if you have space in, like, some suburb in which you can, like, get out, walk, run, and there's not not many people out, you can still go do that. That's not what they're saying. If you have, like, a mask or cloth you can put over your face, do that, and you're fine. Yeah, I agree. 
All right, so I hope, before we leave, I hope everyone is enjoying the $1,200 plus dollars that each of your family members should now be getting via the government. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, enjoy that. All right, Iggy, are you ready to go on to our next topic? I am. All right. It's time to talk about speculation. So, I had no idea. Like, Iggy would be, like, the last person I would think that would know about football. But we got into a deep, deep conversation. Yes. And I, um, and we were just like, yo, we want to talk about it. And we are like, yeah, sure. And that's the whole reason we actually started this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that's literally the reason. So, Iggy, I have three trades, and I want to get your opinion on them. Let me hear your first one. J- Jadavion Clowney. Seattle Seahawks. Seattle Seahawks. He went to he went to he went to South Carolina. So right. okay, so anyway. He is a difference maker for a team. You saw what they did with you saw what he did with Seattle. And How about in Houston yeah. when he was shipped away? <laughs> All right. I'm not gonna blame you or him because good let's talk about too. that DeAndre Hopkins trade for like thirty seconds. All right, go ahead. Bill O'Brien, what are you doing? You don't trade a top three wide receiver in the league for a guy that has been outperformed by a guy cut by Miami. Okay, that is true. Now, let me get back and to this. And get... Higgy. Not the first one pick. Now, Vince, please continue. I want to talk about J.D. Ron I think that he could sign with the Titans because... Um, so the Titans have the 29th pick, and I expect them to, I expect them to replace Jack Conklin, uh, who's the offensive tackle. Um, so, but Jack Con- so Jack Conklin signed with Cleveland a couple of days ago, which was a great move. Um, so that improves both sides of the ball. So I'm expecting Tennessee to sign Joshua Jones from Houston. And, yes. Um, so like, you see where I'm coming from right there? Like I do. Houston okay. is just releasing everyone right now. And it's not even that they're tanking. They have a very solid roster with all those playoff appearances they've had over the last few years. Yeah, so basically, Jadavion Clowney to Houston. Houston gave up Jack Conklin. Um, oh, and, wait, you mean Tennessee? <laughs> ten, sorry, yeah, Tennessee gave up Jack Conklin. So, like, they need, they could use, they could um, need someone to work on the opposite side of the ball um, from uh, Clowney. So I think Joshua Jones is a perfect fit. He went to Houston. He had good stats. One of the top offensive tackles um, in, in, the, in college. And I think he'd be a great fit. All right. Iggy, do you have trades you want to talk about? Uh, yes. This one is technically, well, it could be considered two trades because I'm not 100% sure uh, who would be the bidder for this, but the Arizona Cardinals currently have the 8th overall pick in the 2020 NFL Draft. This is... Uh, the Oakland Raiders have a later draft round. The Steelers don't even have a first-round pick this year. Uh-huh. All right. So because of that, I believe that because the Steelers are actually... Oh, let me explain it. Big Ben Roethlisberger has yeah. been the Steelers' starting quarterback for over 15 Forever. years. This yeah. will be his 16th season in the NFL. He's declining. He is going to be retiring soon. Ever mm-hmm. since 2017, he's been talking about in post-conference, in post-game like conferences or interviews, that retirement is always still an option. Yeah. You, you saw something much similar like this in Brett Favre, in which there's a shot that if he isn't happy with the organization, He's either going to retire or switch teams easily via trade. You know what's happened with Tom Brady and other players. Yes. Uh, And because of that, the Steelers are going to probably want to find their next QB. Now, the Cardinals have a very solid QB in Kyler Murray. But the important thing is they also have two of the best wide receivers, in my opinion. Now, the newly acquired DeAndre Hopkins Hopkins. talked about. And they also have the... My one of my favorite all-time receivers in Larry Fitzgerald. Larry Fitzgerald, he's getting old though, so 
They also have this guy called Kenyon Drake, uh, Miami Kenyon cast Drake. off. And has anyone seen any of his games uh, with the Cardinals? He did very well against the Super Bowl losing San Francisco 49ers. Super Bowl losing. Yeah, that's a good They one. made the Super Bowl. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. if you look at a weekend out of the team, yeah. uh, Arizona, according to Fox, was the 29th worst defense in the NFL, having, well, based on turnovers, you'll notice that they had one of the least interceptions in the league with, they're tied for the least amount with the Detroit Lions and Dallas yeah. Cowboys. Lions, um, Lions kind of suck. The Lions were actually tied the Cardinals, cho- uh, choking 24 consecutive points. See, if you look at forced fumbles as well, the Lion, the the Cardinals were all right, but they weren't that good. Actually, I'm going to take that back. Being fifth in forced fumbles, but the reason <laughs> for that was before they got like Kenyon Drake and like a couple better offensive players Kenyon? during the trade and free agency period during the season. Uh, they had a lot of time on defense because their offense wouldn't get much started. Because of the yeah. long time, long drives from them being blown out of the water, the defense had a lot more opportunities. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how you see teams like Tampa Bay, Detroit, Washington being up top in the f- four fumbles like leaderboard. Same thing for tackles. Yeah. If you look at the teams yeah. with the most tackles, you get Washington Redskins, Arizona Cardinals, New York Jet, I mean Giants, uh, the Miami Dolphins. And Denver yeah. Broncos, along so, with number nine Cincinnati Bengals. All these teams so stay have on that topic. about a top ten NFL draft pick. So stay on that. Yes. So I was just gonna say I have my mock draft ready, and I was about to explain to you. Um, so you said, um, can you repeat that? Who had the who had the most tackles that have the top ten picks? Uh, uh, I believe Miami. Okay. New York. Mm-hmm. But give me a second. Uh, yeah, Miami had a lot of yeah. t- one of the most tackles. New York, Arizona. Yeah. Okay, all right, that's fine. Along so with I the have... Washington Redskins at number one, uh, the Denver Broncos, and number yes. nine was the two and fourteen Cincinnati Bengals. Okay, so stay on that. Because point. of that, the Cardinals will need to bolster their defense with a couple more franchise players. Okay, so, so stay on that point. Maggie, let me explain. Let me explain. In- Okay. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> so, my mock draft, right? Number four, the Giants. I have them taking Isaiah Simmons, an outside linebacker from uh, Clemson. He's versatile. He can tackle. He's quick. And you don't really see that much off. You don't really see that a lot in the NFL right now. The only person I could think of is, like, Von Miller, one of the greatest linebackers of all time from my Denver Broncos, because that's actually my favorite team. Very interesting. Very interesting, yes. And then um, you also mentioned the, the Dolphins. You know they're going to be taking Tua at number five. Uh, maybe. No, they are. Um, I have, and I need to this kind of goes, this kinda goes against the tackles. I ask who the Redskins are going to draft. <laughs> who the number Redskins Number one team in tackles. But... Um, Chase. I think he could. I think he's the best mm-hmm. college player right now. As you can tell, yeah, with all Joker. these like, yes, we can. Yes. With all these like teams that are in the bottom of the defense, also leading league in tackles, that shows that because their offense can't keep them off the field and their defense uh, can't like make many stops, they have to tackle many more times than some teams like the Patriots that can just chew up the clock. Even though they don't have like a teacher back, now you yeah. see the Cardinals are in a position where they have a good offense that can put points on the board pretty quickly. In my yeah. opinion, yeah, yeah, they're they're in a position where they just need a lot more pieces on defense, and in a situation where the there are lots of teams that need a good QB and a lot of, of QBs that have just been released and will be retiring, the Steelers and technically Oakland Raiders because they haven't been doing too well with. Derek Carr since his MVP-like season, which he did not get. Mm-hmm. So you okay. see, with all the picks that you can receive for moving up to a top uh, five, six pick, you can now yeah. have 
that can usually be one or two first rounders or a first rounder and a haul of mid round picks. Those extra picks are exactly what the Cardinals could use to finally stack up a defense that could, in my opinion, get them to compete with Seattle and yeah, yeah. Uh, San Francisco for a yeah, top gonna have spot a good, in playoff appearance. They're going to have a good division next year, that's for sure. I'm not 100% sure about that. I, see how I'm 100% sure. Right. Well, my opinion, uh, they're not all of the teams are not going to be good. Because, as you can tell, the Rams and Cardinals are switching places on the NFC West totem pole, as the Rams have lost a lot of key talent, like Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley. And now they are forcing everything into Jalen Ramsey and Jared Goff. Yes. Two players okay. that are good, but not, like, top two, top three for their position. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to hop into my second trade. Okay, so my second trade... Um, more of like a signing, or um, it could be a trade in the end. You never know. Um, Cam Newton and James Winston, obviously, um, Tom Brady signed with Tampa Bay, so uh, means... with Winston kind of got the boot, um, which is which was a good move. You know, you can't go thirty for thirty and then expect Tonight. to play the next season, um, right. or at least sit the bench. He he could have at least sit the bench, but they said no. So my, predict my prediction is that Jameis Winston will go to the Chargers, even though I have the Chargers drafting um, Justin Herbert from Oregon, uh, pick number six. Um, or you never know, maybe uh, Cam Newton would sign with the Chargers. Um, but I think that um, Cam Newton is going to sign with the Patriots. And I was thinking because the Patriots haven't had an athletic sort of quarterback in a long time, even though I'm not saying that Tom Brady wasn't athletic, but he couldn't run. He couldn't really run. Um, so I think that Cam Newton in New England would be a good spot for him. Um, Can I speak? Yeah, go ahead. Here's the thing. I feel like the upside of Jameis Winston is actually theoretically higher than that of Cam Newton. Due to the fact that, yes, Jameis Winston had 30 touchdowns and 30 interceptions. And I get, yes, I understand that uh, Jameis Winston would not likely go to uh, New England because they use a lot more screen passes and short throws than l long heaves, which Jameis Winston is actually seemed to be very accustomed to doing. There's a I reason he think, led the league very good by at, several um, hundred yeah. yards in <laughs> passing. Yes. I think Cam Newton's more of a short game running quarterback. Well, yes. um, James Winston likes to go deep. Um, so with the Chargers currently rolling out Tyrod Taylor as a starting QB, I'm not going to diss Tyrod Taylor or anything. He's a good QB, he but he is more of a pretty good backup than a good starting QB. James yeah, Winston can, yeah. in the, if he can stop turning the ball over this much, would yeah. become one of the best QBs in the league. He has said this in interviews, and it is true. I you think no, I stats, think it is, I think if it is you true. cut the interceptions in half, he's the number one quarterback. But 30 is a lot. If you cut it down to 15, uh, you yeah. won't be complaining for over 30 touchdowns and 5,000 yards. I, I wouldn't, but it, you can't. You can, I'm just saying, that was just a bad year, and that really defined who I that think. That was that, not a bad year. That was just a polarizing year. When you okay. throw for 5,000 yards, you have had a top 30 passing season in the history of the NFL. Yeah, but you, it, it, it's 30 interceptions. The, just the 30 for 30. I'm not saying he's a bad quarterback. I think he has I, the potential to be the I, best I, quarterback in the league in like five or six years. Well, here's my opinion. He's the Costco quarterback. You get everything. Those get, touchdowns, you, you, get the <laughs> you do get everything from Costco. You get everything from Costco. So I mentioned the Jaguars. Um, Minshew Mania. Minshew Mania. Nothing's going to happen there. He still has a lot to prove. Um, but he, he definitely has the skill. And as I said, um, with New England, I think Cam Newton will go there. Perfect fit, in my opinion. Um I think they could get the job done, but I don't think I don't think they're going to make the playoffs next year. The Patriots or 
the Patriots. Here's the thing. Tom Brady has moved to the NFC. Yes. Philip Rivers has also moved on. Yes. Let me explain. That means yes. that I'm pretty sure one of the only uh, division that remains elite is the AFC, I want to say, East, which is the division with the Baltimore Ravens, Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, wait, yeah. no, my bad. I apologize. No. That is the AFC North. AFC? There's no AFC East. No, there is an AFC East. That's the Jets. That's the Patriots division. Oh. The Jets, Pats. Okay. All right. Let me I thought you said AFC West. That's my favorite division, you know, because the Broncos. So. All right. You know what? Yeah. Sorry. The only competitive it's actually that division isn't too competitive. If the Chiefs uh can okay, recreate okay. this season, they're gonna run away with it again. I see that the Broncos are making some good moves, but they're not being overly aggressive and I won't see too much of an improvement. Yeah, I was happy when they cut Flacco, so Well Drew Flacco's Lockley. just another uh elite with quotation marks. He, he has a ring. He has a ring. Well, yeah, but <laughs> Let's talk about that defense and Ray Lewis, <laughs> but not really. But yeah, yeah really. <laughs> so uh, the AFC is now wide open. The teams mm-hmm. that will make the playoffs are likely going to include the Ravens, Steelers, and Chiefs. The rest of the division yeah. is wide open. All the other powerhouse teams are gone. You'd expect the Chargers to make the Super Bowl. Well, well, not Super Bowl, but the playoffs usually. Where'd Philip Rivers go? He's gone. If you're rolling out Tyrod Taylor, that's probably not going to happen. If yeah. you go to the East, the perennial uh, Super Bowl qualifying team Patriots are gone and have Tom Br- and no longer have Tom Brady. If they don't come back this year, it'll be the first time since I want to say 2008 that they didn't make the playoffs. And remember, that was with an 11 and five record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I believe that the next year will be the Bills' year to claim the division. I like that. I would like that. I would like to see that. So um, the only question is, uh, who's winning the last two divisions? With the Texans losing a lot of key talent, I doubt they're gone. So there will be a couple of new teams appearing in the playoffs. We'll see a new team win the AFC South, which is the Texans, Titans, Colts division. And we will also see another team claim the East. I'm sorry, but the West is still probably going to be the Chiefs. And the North, we know, is already still a good division. Yes. So when I say there's going to be lots of stuff happening, like in competition, I would be paying attention to the NFC playoff picture more. Now every elite QB is there. Yes, Except yeah, that is, that is true. Except for who's already been mentioned. Yeah, uh, all the elite quarterbacks, including Drew Locke. I like that. Ooh, well, he's not elite yet. He, he, will be, he, he will be elite. Trust he me. He will be the next Peyton Manning. He will be oh, John Elway's franchise leader. Maybe, maybe not the next Peyton Manning. He'd be like the next Joe um, Flacco. <laughs> he'd be. Hey, the, he brought a Super Bowl to Baltimore, which might not be 100 percent his fault. But hey, yo, that's how Tom Brady got his defense. Okay. Wait, no, not Tom Brady. That's how Peyton Manning got his final Super Bowl. Okay, so my third trade is Prince Mukamara. We all know he's a cornerback for the Bears, but I think they might lose him to the Jets. The Jets have the 11th pick of the draft, and according to my mock draft, I have the Jets getting Jerry Judy, which is um, that's a good pick. I would say Jerry Judy is definitely the best wide receiver and in the draft. But they, I don't think they're going to be able to replace uh, Abu Kamara. And they, the Bears did lose Haha Clinton Dix, um, and I don't, I don't think the Bears would be able to come back from that. Um, so Haha Clinton Dix went to, I believe, um, where did Haha? I don't even know. That's um, Haha Clinton Dix went to the Dallas Cowboys. Okay, so if we look at Mukamara's stats in 2019, he had zero interceptions for zero yards, obviously. And he had a pretty good performance in 2018 with three interceptions for 58 yards. But I think it's time for the Bears to move on. Um, 
So I think they won't be able. I don't think the Bears will be able to replace him. The Jets will. This is how the Jets will become better. I um, I think they're either going to get Jerry Judy or Henry Suggs. Either one of those go to the Jets. Other one probably I think will go to the Broncos. Right. Um, both from Alabama. I think these are the two best wide receivers in their class. And since the Bears, if this ends up happening, the Bears will lose um, Amu Kamara and they have already lost Clinton Dix. So this is a, a lose-lose situation for the Bears. We also have a video showing a couple of Prince of Hart highlights. While I describe, explain why the Bears will not get that much worse. I mean, he, it, this is a good video. Oh, yeah. um, I just wanted to see yes. his, his skill set. So, you okay. know. He, yeah, I mean, he's, he's a good. He can make tackles. He can make plays. He can defend the ball. There's the Lions. Lions suck. Um, hey, yo, don't disrespect my team. There's the Steelers. Was that Antonio Brown? Yes. I don't know. As you can see, there are he can he has uh, uh, the ability to see things almost before they happen. He can read offenses. Yeah, I don't think yes. his I don't think his skill set is, is should be there with the Bears. I think he can go somewhere else. He gets more confident. Has. A different mindset. I think he can do that with a different team. Let me explain. Personally, if let's just say he signs with the Steelers, the Steelers defense is currently becoming a very elite. Yes. And because of that, I feel like much like in the with the Bears, he will have the ability to not be like the biggest name player there, but he will still be very productive. You see, when yes. you go to a worse team like the Jets. No offense to Jets fans, I'm sorry if you're watching this, but your defense is pretty bad. And yeah. when you have, like, an all-star player like Prince of Mukamara or Khalil Mack join, if you're the Bears back before they became overpowered, uh, yeah. those players will have better, like, inflated stats because they're the only one, one of the only ones making all the plays. Yes, I so do, while yes. While the stats might be better, his actual performance in-game could decline because he's being overworked doing all the work yeah that was that was a wild card one because the only thing i thought about that is because he had zero interceptions last last year last season but and he did not in 2018 um appeared that they might be in a rebuilding phase because they're not signing <laughs> too many free agents and as you well, except for that 50 million dollar nick Foles thing that's just that they don't even know what their starting quarterback is so the Bears will decline. That will not be a result of Prince Mukamara leaving. Yes. There's plenty of good players uh, coming in from the NFL draft, which could shape the franchise of these of the Bears and get their replacement. But because yes. they still have quite a few stars like Khalil Mack, uh, not much <laughs> to say there. Uh, the, they still have like what they need to keep the like the defense, a very strong side of the ball. And I could see more uh, seven, eight, maybe six or nine win seasons uh, coming in the future. But we'll remain yeah. a middle-of-the-road team with playoff aspirations. I don't yes. think they're making the playoffs because of how no. stacked the NFC is now, but yeah. Yes. Okay, Iggy, your third trade? Now it's time to talk about the biggest trade to happen almost since the... 2017, Bears, yes, the Bears traded and did something important, okay? okay. Does anyone remember back 2017 when the Bears traded the third overall pick, their third rounder, their fourth rounder, and the ne and their next year's third rounder to move up one spot yeah. for the San Francisco 49ers? Who'd they get? Draft, yes, Mr. Mitchell Trubisky, Mitchell now Trubisky. being... Competed for the starting job with the Nick Foles, who was just benched this year. Yeah. All right. Here's the difference. We have this new star. His name is Joe Burrow. I'm assuming lots of you have heard of him. Former Ohio State University player, now plays for LSU Tigers. He had one of the best college passing careers of all time. Ever. 
ever. Over 5,600 yards, 60 touchdowns. I want to say six interceptions in yeah. a 200 point, 202 QB rating for like the college level. They are. He is almost guaranteed to be drafted by the Cincinnati Bengals first overall. But you see, with a college season that powerful, he is almost sure to be a franchise quarterback because of the stats. Yeah. And because of that, there are going to be a lot of teams who would like to try and like fantasize getting him. A team that has the ability to actually snag Joe Burrow is the Miami Dolphins. Let me explain just the start of their draft capital. The Miami Dolphins have the fifth overall pick. And along with two other first-round picks this year, two first-round picks next year, and then over this year and next year, another two first- and second-round picks, that leaves nine for top nine picks in the first two rounds. Nine. Mm -hmm. So, with nine picks, with five of them being in the first round over the next two years, the Dolphins have the ability to trade three, maybe four first-rounders to move up four spots in the draft and get Joe Burrow. Let mm -hmm. me explain why Bur this would actually benefit Burrow along with a bunch of other teams and players. Mm -hmm. Joe Bur Ryan Fitzpatrick is a Harvard graduate, and how many games has he played for? Seven, eight? Seven, eight, nine. Uh, also, he beat the Patriots else? with every AFC East team. Uh, 32? What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, Ryan Fitzpatrick has a lot of NFL experience. Yes. Having Ryan Fitzpatrick, a Harvard graduate, as a mentor would be very helpful for a young QB entering the NFL. Yes. He's the, also, he is the Jeremy. He is the Jeremy Lin of the NFL. I see. <laughs> also, uh, one of the most unpredictable teams is the Bengals. Yes. Everyone, let's let's just feel bad as they benched Andy Dalton on his birthday, at, despite him being a ten-year starter for the team. Yeah, that's kind of tough it, for this year. Also, they don't have an indoor practice facility despite living in Ohio. I kind of just want to know, like, why? That is an important, but yeah. Yeah. Yes. Almost that there are other teams. Just this past decade, there have been two major blockbuster trades. Just to move up a few spots, draft a good quarterback. Mm -hmm. Except for in the case... But here's the thing. This is possibly sig signifying a problem with Joe Burrow. Because 2017, a lot of, was done to get Mitch Trubisky. Yes. And now, in 2012, the Redskins, who had the 6th overall pick, traded first round, a first-round pick in 2012, 2013, and also in 2014. Mm -hmm. They traded their second round pick back for that year of 2012, and they moved up to the number two spot with St. Louis. Who did they acquire? Robert Griffin III, also known as RG3. RG Bust, yes. He was not a, exactly a bust. He played very well his rookie season. If I'm not wrong, he acquired Rookie of the Year. But you about... see, after something happened in which some a severe injury happened to his knee and being forced back by the Redskins to return too early, uh, he his career almost ended with that injury. Yes. 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 And also, if the Bengals were not to get Joe Burrow, there were still lots of options. As you've discussed, Cam Newton and Jameis Winston are free agents and highly mm. coveted free agents at that. But yes. because they weren't signed, that would give the Bengals an opportunity. They yes. still have Andy Dalton, who's an elite quarterback. Do you know who else is still an elite quarterback? They yeah. recently cut Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco. <laughs> you can have... There are so many good QBs that they could still grab. Like, along mm -hmm. with Cam Newton, Jameis Winston, Joe Flacco, keeping Andy Dalton, there's also Geno Smith, Blake Bortles, and Blaine Gabbert. Just to name a few. And two of them, but not, not many. Of, none of these people have starting jobs anymore, except for Mr. Andy Dalton. But you see, being able just to keep one or two of those quarterbacks would keep very good QB competition around, and allow the Bengals to uh, rebuild with them, and would yeah. just wait for another QB to get drafted. You don't need to get a QB when you can trade 
uh, and get several first-round picks over the next few years. Uh, mm-hmm. You get a haul of defensive players, offensive players, and just uh-huh. a bunch of other spots to improve your roster. Uh-huh. And with all these big-name QBs as free agents, you don't need to go in a draft and get a non-proven quarterback. <laughs> um, also, if you're... You, trying, went, if, you went really into depth. On yes, the- also, I'm not done yet. <laughs> all right. All right. We are also aware that on Twitter, uh, after we saw like the Dolphins in free agency, they mm-hmm. signed lots of players to huge contracts, and it was very aggressive this offseason. Byron Jones, eighty-two million dollar deal. Cal Van Noy, fifty-one million dollar deal. Eric Flowers and Shaq Lawson each got a thirty million dollar deal. Emmanuel Ogba got a fifteen million dollar deal. That's not everything. All right. Yes, so and, bigger... and the Dolphins are still going to get to a Tego by Uh, not necessarily. They could trade up and get Burrow, as I've been saying. See, I have... Be... <sighs> Go ahead. Yeah, you can stop it. You can talk. Okay, I was going to say, I have my taking Tua, obviously. I don't see why they wouldn't go with Tua. But I also have them taking... No, I also have them taking... Um, Offensive tackle Andrew Jackson from USC, um, and I think what you, who you just said they acquired, that's that's a great move. I think their draft is going to be really good. I'm not saying I, I'm I'm saying that Tua is going to be a life changing for the Dolphins. I think the Dolphins can make the playoffs, possibly win a Super Bowl in the next, or at least go to the Super Bowl or go deep into the playoffs within the next five or six years. And I think I, I I think they'll have a great draft. That's all I gotta all say. Right. I'm I'm rooting for the Dolphins. All right, I'm going to bring us back the 2019 NFL defenses. As I recall, saying that both the Bengals and Dolphins are well, the, the Dolphins have lots of picks. If they trade that to the Bengals, the Bengals have the 24th worst best defense in the NFL, so they were in the bottom third, all right? Mm-hmm. They yeah. Were, they, were, they did not have many tackles, did not have many turnovers. There was just not much good going on for them. And with the haul they could get from Miami, and if they pick up one of the free aging quarterbacks, one of the many, they could easily get a lot of holes filled for their roster. And with that roster being filled by other players, they would have a, a far better defense, most likely in the top half. And they could also, if it doesn't turn out, tank and get Trevor Lawrence the next year. A quarterback who I believe has been more consistently good than Joe Burrow. Mm-hmm. If you disagree, okay. uh, talk to me in the okay. comment section below. I and disagree. We can compare Joe Burrow to Trevor Lawrence in a couple of years. I, dis- I disagree. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> we will talk about that later. Right. Okay, Iggy. Um, this is going to become very controversial, this next topic. All so, right. Oh, I by see. the way, before we move on to the next topic, the defenses you were just talking about, um... You know, you know that list that um, Tom has right now? Who's number one? Well, you see, the number one team on the list is the New England Patriots because they happen to have 12.2 points per game allowed. Buffalo is right below them with 14.8. Baltimore's up there at 16.9. You can see that the runner-up San Francisco 49ers are at 5th. The Super Bowl winning Kansas City Chiefs are at 7th. And you usually see, like, the, wor- the worse the teams get, the worse their defenses get. You see Miami, Carolina, New York, Arizona, Washington, Detroit. Yes. Go up to Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. But I'm actually not 100% sure that it's all Tampa's fault when, if you look at the field position they're given by Jameis Winston. Yes. I feel like it, it, they don't need to do anything to their defense and it will get better because there's going to be far less turnovers. Yes. Um, I, can agree. I can't agree with that. All right, Iggy, you ready for this last topic? All right, I am. So our last topic is, it's going to be interesting, to say the least. Um, ah, yes. Franchise quarterbacks. Franchise quarterbacks. Franchise quarterbacks. Have, 
most people who have seen football have heard about them. Franchise they tag. Center- franchise tag. On quarterbacks. Uh, no, that's not exactly it. Yes, it the is. Franchise quarterback is the quarterback. The franchise quarterback is a quarterback who can change, who can yes. stay there. Not a quarterback that's been franchise tagged. But no, no, no. But they're going to have to be <laughs> franchise tagged. They don't have to. Well, they're. Okay. That just prevents us think... from talking to them that fast. Yes. The franchise think... tag is different. I, no, the franchise he... quarterback is a quarterback that the team has to build around. Like everything revolves around the quarterback. Like, I know. In the saying... repeated Super Bowl winning. New England Patriots. Tom Brady is a franchise quarterback. Everything is important with him and Bill Belichick. But I, I, I brought the franchise tag up because I think that if you are a franchise quarterback, you should probably get franchise tag. But that isn't exactly how the franchise tag works. The but I know. Franchise tag is just a method to prevent other teams from taking your franchise quarterback, which is actually exactly what Dallas did when trying to secure both Amari Cooper and Dak Prescott. Yeah. Not okay, every QB will need to get franchise tag if they want to stay with the team. But I think they should. Hey, anyway, Iggy, anyway. We have franchise quarterbacks that we're going to talk about. Um, right. they, can, they, can, they can be young. They can be old. Um, Not that young. I, I, have, I have my list. Uh, we might All have right. the same ones. We need to discuss um, who we're going to be putting on the list. So I'm gonna, so we're gonna go back and forth. You're gonna I'm gonna say one, you're gonna say one, and then right. we'll, we'll do like we'll do like two or three each. All right. Okay. You okay. Can you start with your first one. I'll Don't start. Tom Brady because we've already covered that. Okay. I mean, that's the biggest one. Okay. My number one. Um, Drew Brees. Ben Roethlisberger. Well, I was gonna explain why I said Drew Brees. Oh, okay. You go back to Drew Brees and Tom um, Brady. Do you agree or disagree? First, I definitely agree. There's definitely nothing agree. stopping me from saying that Drew Brees um, is not one of the best quarterbacks of all time. And he is all the time he best. spent with the New Orleans Saints and how the offense revolves around him, Sean Payton, and their hopefully future uh, franchise quarterback, Hassan Hill. Yes, I really want to see that happen. Uh, yes, okay. Um, so the thing about Drew Brees, I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of Drew Brees. Um, but this twenty, this last 2019-2020 season was by far one of his best seasons offens- off- offensively. I know he didn't win a uh, Super Bowl. He, I know he has a ring. Well, yes, um, but you see, there but, was a year a long time ago in which it, not just Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, and lots of other quarterbacks had a great season. I believe yeah. Drew Brees went over 5,000 yards still didn't secure the NFL MVP. I'm not sure what happened back, I want to say in 2013, but whatever it was, that was by far one of his best seasons. Yes. So, um, Drew Brees, um, he, he went, like when Drew Brees played, um, he, these are his 2019 stats, I'm going to say. Um, he was 8 and 3 when he played, a 74% completion, uh, 3,000 yards. Um, almost eight yards per attempt, 27 touchdowns, four interceptions. Well, when you hear that and you see the 3,000, you might not think that it's his best season. But you have to remember, he was out for six games with an injury. So if you look at his passing yards per game, completion rating, it is pretty good. It is, no, uh, yeah. 3,000 yards in 11 games? That's Yes. So that's good. in total, it's not impressive, but his yards per game, touchdowns, touchdown interception ratio, they're all still top tier Drew Brees numbers. Yes, I would take Drew Brees in my fan on my fantasy team. Um, I, yeah, I, 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 I didn't get him last year. I got Michael Thomas, who I, is my best player. So anyway, if you just you can't base someone as franchise quarterback off of one season. It's about the free agency draft moves at, after he's had a good season or two, and seeing how they stick with him. Now, if they, let me they, they have up, stuck they have stuck with him. Ever well, since yes, that's last, the reason he's a franchise quarterback. Not yeah, since he the, the team, team was like the Chargers or something. He did, he did all right there. I'm not saying he did trash, no. but he did. I'm just gonna mm-hmm. hit a couple, two really quick ones. Ben okay. Roethlisberger and Philip Rivers ha- had both stuck with their NFL teams for at yes. least 15 years. All right, 
because mm-hmm. of that, they were very, uh, they they were both elite franchise quarterbacks who the team revolved around. Now that Philip Rivers is gone, we're all talking about uh, who are the Chargers going to use as their starting quarterback. What's going to happen to the Chargers? Uh, now with Ben Roethlisberger considering retirement as an option, you have to wonder: Do they tank and get another QB? When you have a franchise quarterback and you're on the verge of losing them, you have to, you're you're immediately going to think: What's going to happen? They have been the entire offense. Hmm. And who's your next two franchise quarterbacks? Well, I was expecting you to just to say one. I'm but sorry, but it's all right. So. My, I don't know, we might have already talked about him, but I, my second one, I chose Aaron Rodgers. Oh yeah. my god, I was going to do something with Aaron Rodgers later. No, we're, alright, go, go now. Do you want to explain? Yes, you explain first. All I was, all, all was going to say about Aaron Rodgers, because I don't really need to explain much. He, you, after Brett Favre left, he proved himself to be one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, in my opinion. He he make he's made the playoffs almost every year. Not well, not almost every year, but you know he made the playoffs. Well, no, it was it was almost every year. It, well, I didn't really want to say that because I wasn't for sure. But All right. um, if, if he he averages, um, um, what am I supposed to say? He's he's averaging at least twenty twenty touchdowns in a season with like 3,000 yards and a, like a 70 completion percentage every year. That's why the, that's why the, uh, All right, like, keep talking. Well, in like average, but all right. Mm-hmm. But 2019, he had 4,026 touchdowns and a 62% completion. Not, um, he was 14th in pass rating. They did it all right that year. Um, uh, can I talk? Yeah. Like I have. I have like a. Let me explain. I think I think he needs more weapons though. If he had more uh, weapons, you do not need more weapons when you're Aaron Rodgers. Right? Yes, he, I mean, let, no, let's you talk. Don't. All right, I have let's the guy. I have the, the pack. A franchise quarterback receiver. can almost change something by themselves, as you can tell from uh, twenty nine. Ever since uh, more or less twenty ten, when Aaron Rodgers was the big starting QB, the Packers have had. Wait, no, it was ever since almost 2009. Packers have had at a winning record every year that all, that bef- that a Aaron Rodgers has been healthy and the coaching system was not under question. 2018, Aaron Rodgers was injured and only played about half the season. Yes. In 2017, Mike McCarthy started getting concerned and that let... Oh, no, 2017, he was injured and then 2018... Uh, they actually lost their head coach in Mike McCarthy, which led to instability, and which was why they had their only losing record in Aaron Rodgers' tenure since his starting rookie year. Yes. Your first year it makes sense, but if a team with only one or two good wide receivers in your entire career is consistently getting ten plus wins in playoff chances, yes. it is very successful. Let me start. Two thousand nine wild card game, they did lose. Next year, 2010, they won the Super Bowl. Who carried yes. the team to the Super Bowl? Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. They had the maybe Steelers. one good receiver and didn't have much of a running back. That was Next two years, Steelers. they lost in the divisional round. Yep. Do, do you know who their best receivers were? Jordan Nelson, Nelson and Randall Cobb. Randall, Randall Cobb Nelson. was removed from the team. Yes. One, in my opinion, one of the greatest duos of all time. And then over the next two years, they lose the wild card in the conference championship. They were one game away from the Super Bowl in 2014. Uh-huh. All right. And then they once again made the playoffs for the next two years, once again losing in the conference championship and divisional rounds. If you have that much consistency making it to the playoffs with maybe one, maybe two good wide receivers, and once that quarterback goes away, that is what you mean as a franchise quarterback. Yes. We go even farther back to Brett Favre. During the Favre era, he, which he was, was a franchise quarterback too, from '92, yeah, '92, all the way up to the Rodgers era in 2007, the Packers were very consistently good, winning playoffs. In fact, if you can tell, 
Brett Favre actually brought them to two Super Bowls. They only won one of them, though. And without Favre, the team had, would always not fare that well. Like, if you go before the Favre era, you would see almost a losing culture before they had, like, their starting quarterback and god-tier coach in Mike yes. Vince Lombardi. Yes. So, so a franchise was... quarterback is very important. Yes, so a franchise quarterback, um, they can support the organization by themselves and the team. Um, and they're not, they're not going to be replaced. So if you look at, like, um, Aaron Rodgers, you look at Ben Roethlisberger, you look at Joe Flacco for a while. <laughs> um, the elite Joe Flacco. I mean, he, he used to be good. He used to be good. Um, you look at... I'm sorry, but it's Joe Flacco. You have to, you know, make jokes. I mean, it's Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco, <laughs> that guy. Bad move for the Broncos to pick him up. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah. has ended. <laughs> yes, it has ended. So you have you know Drew Brees, Rogers, Roethlisberger, Rivers for a while. Um, nah, it was Rivers until Rivers and Brady yeah. until this year, in which they let, were abandoned. Yeah, and now yeah. with with them gone, him. because you lost your franchise quarterback, we honestly don't know what's happening with those teams. I see the reason that the thing that makes a quarterback a franchise quarterback is the stability they can bring to an organization. Yes. Now, if you look at upcoming, who you think will end up being like a franchise quarterback, who are we looking at? All right. All right. I feel like this guy's already become a franchise quarterback. Patrick Cam Mahomes, Newton. we're not going to go over that. I think, he's I think Cam, $100 million. Uh, he's fine. I think Cam Newton, James, like, I think the people we mentioned Cam earlier. Cam Newton is no longer a franchise quarterback. We don't even know if he'll be signed. Okay, Diggy, I think if he signs with a good team, he would be able to, he could, he could become that franchise quarterback. I knew he could become in the league after I'm sorry, but I do not expect Cam Newton to return to a franchise level quarterback. He was think, the franchise QB in Carolina, but after that Super Bowl, his decline began, yes. and that's what led to the instability in him no longer Wait, being Iggy. the starting QB or on a Iggy. roster. Iggy, who did they lose to? They lost to the Broncos, the Broncos. and Peyton yes, Manning. Sir. He yes, brought sir. stability to yes, Denver. Peyton, he wasn't Peyton, exactly Peyton, there. For for a not for long. All right. He might not have been Denver's franchise quarterback, but he was definitely the franchise QB in Indianapolis. Yes. Um, Denver is John Elway's place. Indianapolis is Manning's place. Yes. Um, well, that depends. Is Denver about to be taken over by the long-term stability provided by who? John Elway. Oh, Drew Locke? <laughs> Why is this John is now Drew Locke's town. This is now Drew Locke's town. No, it's not. Um, it's not. Okay, so like let, let's go back to the upcoming. I want to. Yes, I want. I want to. Okay, I but think Drew want... Lock, um, James Winston. No. Um, yes, I think he. Uh, James Winston. Tell, Winston. Listen, whoever he signs, he can sign with the Chargers and take them to uh, the playoffs. He, I know he can do it. That, this was just a bad year for him. It was not. Let me explain. He's always had a lot of turnovers. This was just the first year he had. A, a huge amount of passing yards to go with the interceptions. Everything was in bulk this year. This was oh, just yeah, the Jameis Winston give me attention year. Yeah. yeah. And it appears the attention wasn't that helpful for his career. I'd say what I mean, remember how I said QBs mean stability? Yes. When you say, like, Jameis Winston or Cam Newton, the fact that they've been cut and had, like, controversial decisions on whether or not they should remain for almost a season makes me less sure that they're a franchise QB. That's cool. like the difference between Rodgers and Roethlisberger. The only problem with them that wouldn't make them a franchise quarterback is them retiring. So when I think of up-and-coming franchise quarterbacks, I think Kyler Murray, Josh Allen. Gardner Minshew. <laughs> the mustache. The mustache. I, but listen, there, there's some, you know, three or four year uh, players in the league that I think can, um, you know, maybe we can look at um, Marcus Mariota. He hasn't been in the league for that long. He hasn't really got the spotlight he deserves. I think he can, if he gets on a different team where he starts starting again, he can be the quarterback. I know he can be. He can I, be a very good quarterback. 
I feel like a Marcus Mariota belongs with the Raiders, personally. Okay. But that would be more of like a trade day type yeah, that's, that's, uh, conversation. That's more of a trade, that's more of a no, trade let me thing. explain. What do you think is worth getting a franchise quarterback? What would you trade for one? Who would I trade for a franchise quarterback? So a franchise quarterback can... Let's say trade. you could get like the career of Aaron Rodgers. Like, yes. And that, that's the number one overall pick. Yes. Let's say you're at like the 10th overall pick. Yes. And you, how many draft picks would you be willing to spend to get Aaron Rodgers? So how about we just take a look at this right now? You have Joe Burrow, and the 10th pick is the Browns. So I'll just use this example. I've been so trying that, to make it different than my Miami example. You know what? I'll just do this however I want to do it. Okay. So, so let's say I was the Browns right now, the 10th pick, and I wanted Joe Burrow. And, but, but if I would, I would trade, I would trade up. Cause you would trade everything you had to get that franchise quarterback. I would, I, yes, I would, because you know why? A franchise quarterback can carry a team. doesn't matter who the weapons are. Here's Top. my personal opinion. Okay. I don't... I believe that most... not If you're, like, in the position of the Bengals, mm -hmm. and let's say you have... And they have a good quarterback in Andy Dalton. The yeah. problem is they don't have the good roster around him. If yeah. you have a team who could really use the franchise quarterback and give you a massive haul for it, I say yeah. you don't go for the franchise quarterback. You go for literally every other roster position that you can use and improve it. Because a franchise QB is unlikely to do everything all by himself. I get that Aaron Rodgers literally proves me wrong there, but he's always had one very good receiver, be it Jordan Nelson or Devontae Adams. That is true, but not... You need at least one weapon. Yeah, okay, that is true, but... Okay, so let's say we were using this Browns reference. If the Browns got up and got Burrow, they have at least one good, one good wide receiver. But, but they have Baker Mayfield, who's already a good QB. I'm not, I'm not a Baker fan, though. But no, 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 no. We're not, not, okay, if, let's say this was... Let's go back to the Dolphins, whose starting QB is Dolphins. a journeyman that hasn't ever so found like, a team that let's needs to... Let's say the Dolphins, let's say the Dolphins, okay, let's say the Dolphins have the 10th pick. And I want to move up. And let's say they had no other picks before that. They just had the 10th pick. I would trade up to get Burrow. So when you have, the, the, they have the fifth overall pick in the entire house, what I'm saying, they have the resources to trade up. Now yeah. you're saying that that move makes sense for literally everyone. I would, yes, if I were, yeah. If I were anyone, I would move And yet up you were opposing my trade half an hour ago. Which trade was that? My Miami Dolphins for Joe Burrow. The one that you said I did way too much research on. Okay, well, that, that that's not gonna happen though. But I'm saying if I were, uh, if, like, realistically, like in real life, that's not gonna happen. Actually, I'm it saying, probably could. There's a reason I'm discussing it. But I don't think it's gonna happen. If I were the tenth pick, ninth, tenth, eleventh pick, I would move up to get uh, Joe Burrow mm -hmm. with everything I have. But you see, that depends. Because a franchise quarterback isn't just the team. Yeah, but you have the what? There is the entire these, team. Every single team, every single team has at least one good wide receiver. Even the Dolphins. Who? Devontae Parker. Mm. All Alfred right. Wilson. All right. Yeah. Who? Who else? Who's the Bears? The Bears. Who? The Bears. <laughs> okay. 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 But um, then you see they don't have a good QB to make a star wide receiver. I think Trub I, I think Trubisky is, is good. They have Allen Robinson. But here's the thing. To have an elite wide receiver, you need a franchise quarterback to make them. Oh, Darius Patterson, veteran, one of the greatest returners of all time. Return, not receiver. But he's also a receiver, but he's well, also elite. That's not what he's known for. Here's the thing. You need... A franchise quarterback or elite quarterback to make a receiver elite. So when you think of the value of a franchise quarterback, you need to think offense and stability. For teams that already have that, they don't truly need a franchise quarterback. A decent quarterback can get them a win. Like, let's go back to Philadelphia, in which they have Carson Wentz, and this was the other one, the Super Bowl. Yeah. Carson Wentz goes down. Nick yeah. Foles did not bring too much stability. 
but he was a good enough quarterback and they had a good enough roster overall to beat New England, who had a franchise quarterback in Tom Brady. Yes, obviously. You truly don't need a franchise quarterback to win a Super Bowl. If you well, have, can have a good enough roster overall, you will be fine without one. Wouldn't it greater your chances, though? It would, but I would say that you would... That's why Tom Brady has six rings. That's Bill Belichick. We'll see how he does in Tampa. <sighs> that's another discussion for another day. That's that's another discussion. But that's... Okay, so... All right. Um, ending with... um, You said the Patriots and the Super Bowl with Tom Brady. Um, I just want to say... I made a mock draft, as you know, and it's interesting. So I was going to pinpoint some of the my picks. I want to have your personal opinion. All right. And it's, it's going to be quick. I'll maybe do like three or four. All right? All right. So number one, I think you know how you have a really strong opinion on this, and it was really good. Um, number one, Joe Burrow to the Bengals. So you believe that's going to happen? I do. And why do you say it's not? I've explained that earlier, and I don't think anyone wants to hear me continue ranting about it. That's why I brought it up. No one wants to hear it. All right. Number two, Chase Young. Going, to the, going to the Redskins. He's going to the Washington Redskins. That's confirmed. I, I want the Lions to it up, but I know they won't. Okay. So are you, you're sorry, are you like a big Lions fan? Yes. You have no okay. idea how much depression I have with Matt Patricia as a head coach. Yes, okay, I'm not a Lions fan. He ran obviously. a team, one win from the playoffs, the ground. Yes, okay, so I have the Lions drafting Jeff Okuda. Now, they got rid of Darius Slay. Big play. But big, they got rid of Big Play Slay, who I was sort of a fan of. He wasn't bad. He was We've lost to, we used to have probably the best cornerback duo in the league with Big Play Slay. And uh, Andre Diggs. Andre when you Diggs. lose both of them in the same e- year or two, you lose your, one of your all star wide receivers. Uh, and, but you don't officially tank it, and you're not drafting well or being aggressive in PH. And so it honestly seems like the only thing we're doing is intentionally losing. Yes, that's Here's my personal opinion blow it all up, everything, coaching, ownership. The GM, fire everybody. And Martha, sell the team. Well, if the Ford family ran uh, their car company like they did the Lions, they would need government bailouts to get them out of it. <sighs> that is true. All right, Iggy, can I move on to the next one? We have two more. All right. Number five with the Dolphins. Do we have any more controversial ones, or are these uh, just picks that everyone already believes? No. Well, number five, Tua. Well, you see... If the Dolphins trade for Burrow, the Bengals would trade would have to pick up Tua. But I'm not hundred percent sure how much the Dolphins are even sold on Tua if they don't trade out. I would personally say with the quarterback free agency and Ryan Fitzpatrick, they are fine. So you're saying it's gonna be like a switcheroo kind of thing with the Dolphins it's taking going to be, Joe Burrow and the Bengals taking Tua? Or if the Dolphins don't. I'd say they're in a position Ryan Fitzpatrick, they don't need to do much, I say they should try and go after one of the proven QBs in Cam Newton, James Winston, and Joe Flacco. Or Geno Smith. Geno Smith. Yeah, okay, so yes. last one, Iggy, last one, then we're going to wrap it up. So obviously there's going to be a replacement in New England, and I think that Jordan Love, quarterback from Utah State, um, I'll pull up his stats right now. He, I think he's I think he's fine. Um, I'm not going to get your, um, your opinion. Um, do, you know who, do you know who Jordan Love is? I do, but I think he's yeah. falling to the Packers in which he becomes the next great QB in uh, Green Bay, and he's going to be the next QB I hate for uh, 10 years. Okay, so looking at his Stop stats... Stop beating the lights. So looking at his stats, he, 20, he was 20 and 17, 20 touchdowns, 17 interceptions. Not great, um, but also not bad. Um, 61 completion percentage... 3,400 yards, so that's, that's you know, really good. But you would have to look at, like, tape to analyze that. We can look at his film later. Here's the thing. I kind of feel like with... I'm going to go back to my very... 
pointed opinion of Billy O'Brien. Uh, yes, you have a strong opinion of Bill O'Brien. Maybe. You trade Jadeveon Clowney. You trade DeAndre Hopkins. You compare DeAndre Hopkins to Aaron Hernandez, the convicted murderer. Mm -hmm. And yet he has no problems off the field that anyone's aware of. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. You don't get rid of all your star players. I'm not calling Aaron Hernandez a star, yeah. star player. I'm referring to the other two. I okay. feel because, like, why not? He's going to end up trading Deshaun Watson to the Patriots for, like, nothing. Yeah. I, I don't have any evidence to back this up. I just feel like that's the type of thing Bill O'Brien would do. Yeah, he, he, he I did get rid of I feel like this isn't, like, remember I said Trevor Lawrence might, might be actually a better than Tua and Joe Burrow? I believe I mentioned yeah. that earlier. I think okay. the shot Patriots tank for Trevor Lawrence. Okay. I mean, I can see that happening. Tanking for Trevor. Mm -hmm. A new AFC East team is tanking for a player with the first name, starting with T. Yes. Tanking for Tua? Nope. Tanking for Trevor. All right. Iggy? I um, think we I think are going to here. hang it up. I think we're going to wrap it up. Um... Thank you guys for listening or watching. Um, I also want to say one more thing. Please let us know what you guys want to hear us talk about. We're open to anything. We'll do more than just sports um, or more than right. just football. Um, so, Iggy, Iggy, what do you want to say? Just hit us up in the comments. That's what you want to do. And that's it. And Please now, subscribe. Good night. Good night. Good night.